growing up, I remember walking down Broadway and passing by a lot of these newsstands that were in the corners that would import these graphic novellas from Mexico. A lot of these comic books were dealing with social issues, were dealing with domestic issues, you know, there's machismo and all these kind of things involved in them. So I'm always looking at popular culture. I'm very interested in those kind of things. So when I see these graphic imagery, I found it very compelling. Check this one out. This is kind of trippy here. He's upset here and he's about to take his belt and he starts whacking the kids. This girl's cheering him on. It says, Dale duro, jefe. Like, uh, hit him harder, dad. So I don't know the story here, but the father's abusing the kids. You know, it's life experiences. So these are images that are probably used in my work. For the past 14 years, I've been working with at-risk youth. And a lot of these families, there's a lot of absentee fathers. And so working within those environments, I have seen a lot of uh, domestic issues. What I've come to terms with for years is that it's part of my practice. As an artist, it informs what I do because it affects me in such a major way where I'm thinking about commenting about these experiences to generate some sort of dialogue or to have like a private view into some of these topics that are happening in society. I thought, how can I create a work that makes people think about this? So I started sourcing these images from these books, but removing the text and working on the narrative a little bit more differently where you don't know what's the beginning or the end. You just wondered like, what could they be saying? But what is familiar is the imagery. And to me, that was important. Where we're able to look at it, because they're comic books, and they're very graphic in the sense that it's drawn, it makes it easier to enter such a hard topic. Then when you actually realize what's going on, it makes you really ponder and think about these issues and place you in a position where you're almost in the space where these things are happening and you're a witness to it. As people, we've all experienced domestic violence or know someone who's experienced domestic violence. So it allows us to enter the work and experience it at a much personal level. I think that for him to bring his world, his neighborhood, his Guatemalan roots, his family, his work as a social worker, and then combined it with all this art education that he's received in some of the best schools in the country. You know, it's a really interesting combination that he's now trying to put together and present as a practicing artist. I think he's decided that social practice is what he likes to do. When I went to see the exhibition, one of the pieces that caught my eye right away was this image of a hat that said, Happy Father's Day, Mom. And I thought, wow, it's very profound because it got me thinking about how many single mothers have to be father and mother to their children. And so we celebrate Mother's Day, we celebrate Father's Day, but we always celebrate it according to the sexes. In his early practice, even as a student at CalArts, Neri had this concern about the relationship of art and culture and art's role participating in Culture. And when I say culture, I'm talking about race, gender, those issues that are policy driven, that are involved in government and involved in trying to make the lives of people better. And he's always had that interest. There are traditional notions of art that argue that art should not be involved in political and social issues because the proper venue for political and social issues is politics. Art, on the other hand, is part of a long tradition of aesthetics. Um, aesthetics is completely separated from politics because the essential idea that it's grounded in is that aesthetics talks about an experience that's universal to all of us, but politics talks about local and specific issues that are not universal to all of us. Not all people are victims of discrimination. Not all people have the same experience with the issues of gender. Not all people have the same relationship with the political ideas. So the earliest artists who experimented in this area received a tremendous backlash. Principally the argument was that they were not making art. 
So when somebody like Mary comes along and has this conviction of producing a practice that comes up under concern for culture directly, that's a pretty radical posture to take. The work that I have in the back room are the drawings that my son did from the age of four to six. I approached him and I said, look, you know, I want to do a project with you. I want us to collaborate and I want you to just be drawing and I'm going to come in and I'm going to draw with you. I'm going to draw on top of your drawings. And he says, oh, that's really cool. And so for me, when I did this project, I kind of wanted to create a, a work that could be an example and, and hopefully it could be mimicked and copied and somebody else could do this, some parent could do that with their kid. Let's get together and draw a picture together. Most boys are interested in superheroes, so I created you know, images to go along with, with his images. One of them is E.T. that I drew and he drew this Hulk and so I drew E.T. holding the Hulk. He drew this Power Ranger mask, so I drew myself behind the Power Ranger mask. So it's kind of like these things where there's affection or love or these basic things. And my hope is, as simple as it is, is for it to function as an intervention. Working with families and being a father myself, I want to find more time to spend time with my kids. So it was fun to do a project with him where I was able to spend more time with him and have him involved. And oh man, when he came to the opening, he was like telling everybody, oh look, I did this with my dad, you know? And oh, that feeling, I mean, it's like, yeah, I don't care about anything else, man. That's, that just made my day. <laughs> yeah.